So there's certain conversations, guys, that we should never have. Certain conversations where our past. Um, and how do I explain this? There's certain relationships that God has closed it off and your past is small talk. So what does that mean is when sometimes when you see those individuals, it's okay just to, to greet them and you're not ending up into that small chit chat that's really, um, it's not genuine. You know, there are people who feel that in order to make sure that they are not holding unforgiveness against anyone, and I've, I've experienced this before too, and you know, the Lord has shown you that these individuals are not for you or their heart is not for you. It's like the proof and everything has been out. You see it, whatever. Don't force conversations. Don't make yourself do and have conversations that it's not heartfelt because that's hypocrisy. That's number one. And it's like you're walking in like it's like you're being drawn into deception. So what does that mean? When you and I, when God moves us from certain relationships and certain people, um, he does not want you to have any sort of malice or strife against them. Meaning like you see them and you're not feeling anything against them. Like, oh, I'm, I'm upset. Oh, this is such a hard conversation. When God sets you free, when he deals with your heart in offenses or anything, when he sets you free, you just, you, you feel free. So if you see them, you can just be like, hey, how are you? Or, you know, good morning or whatever it may be to whatever capacity you see them. If you're at the same function, you may see them and you totally feel free. You don't feel like you need to hide or you're trying to avoid contact. You're just fine. It is amazing sometimes. Have you ever seen somebody when they don't want to talk to you and all the stuff that they do to avoid you? You know, they see your car pulling up, you know, at the workplace. They'll hurry up and scuttle out the car to get in before they have to say anything to you. It is almost like, it's almost comical to watch people who don't want to talk to you. I've watched people dig and dig into their console in their car just to avoid speaking. You know, I have no problem speaking. I see them. I'm looking as I'm passing by. You can't help it. But the person sees you and they're just looking down and they're just digging in their purse or in their console. It's the most craziest things people will do to avoid speaking to you. Or the things that they'll do, they'll see you, they'll they'll leave and come back and drive around. And guys, this is a person that's not free. And when you're not free, you become very animated in the things that you do. And you're just uncomfortable the whole time. When you're free, you can literally see the, see someone speak and be like, hey, how are you? And keep on going. That's genuine and that's that's true. That's coming truly from your heart. You feel nothing. But guys, when you try to engage in anything deeper with a person whose heart is not even with you and it's been revealed, you can see it. It becomes very strained. It's those that weird conversation you're trying to have and it feels really strange and it feels strained and it feels really fake. Don't. Put yourself to that. Don't do it. You're not required to have those type of conversations. Sometimes certain relationships, you're beyond the small talk. Why? Because the Lord has revealed the heart of the person. They're deceiving. Sometimes you already see and you know they don't really like you. They don't want to talk to you. So don't force people to talk to you. Don't force people to be your friend. You continue to live, be a light, do what you do. When you see them, hey, how are you? And keep going on. You don't have to make, try to make someone like you. Force them. Honey, no hunter is going to appreciate a deer that jumped out the bushes in their arms. Just leave it alone. It does not mean you're having any sort of odd or unforgiveness against them. You cannot fellowship with someone that's evil. You cannot fellowship with someone whose heart is not with you. You cannot fellowship with someone that's just saying stuff at that moment to be nice to you. The heart is desperately wicked. Who shall know it? And I'm not here to cause people to just wear anti-people, anti-socializing. But a lot of people keep getting hit in the face over and over again. They keep getting egg on their face. They keep getting hurt. They keep getting... Um, themselves caught up in the cycle of 
of uh, delays because you keep on trying to go over in a place where, listen, these people are your enemies. They don't like you. They're hypocritical. They're two-faced. They don't like what you stand up for. And a lot of times that happens because as they walk in carnality and sin, the enemy or the, the evil spirits within them recognize the spirit of God. It's not going to work. That's why you have those strained conversations. Those fake conversations. Oh, okay, how, how's everything going? And, you know, and then you just feel totally disgusted afterwards. That literally has happened to me. And I asked the Lord, Lord, why do I feel this way? The Lord said, that conversation you try to have back there. Arlene, you don't have to do those things. And he asked me, why did you do it? And I, I thought about it. I said, Lord, I just, you know, want to ensure that, you know, I, I don't have any, I don't have any malice or anything. You know, God was like, that's, that's not what you do. You don't have malice because you're free. You're not trying to avoid them. You're not trying to avoid this person. That's your freedom, that you, you are at peace, you are at rest. But you also have to keep those clean lines to realize what I, what I revealed to you. When I revealed danger, when I revealed that what this is, and I've shown you and they've demonstrated that, then you take that at face, valuable, fat, first, <laughs> at face value and leave it there. You go no further than the peaceful greetings that I've given to you. You know, obviously, if you see their trunk is open, you'll be like, hey, your trunk's open. You left your trunk open. You left your car open. Your husband's outside. Your wife's looking for you. You know, something like that. But you don't. There's certain lines, guys, certain conversations, small talk. Sometimes you're beyond that because we have to realize everything is spiritual. Spiritual. And certain things, guys, that what happens is a lot of people are just taking people at face value and not realizing. And sometimes people, they're involved in a lot of things, evil and darkness and sin. And that people can, these individuals could actually have an odd against you. And so even though God wants you to walk in that freedom, he does not necessarily want you to end up in those, those conversations that's very fake. Those fake conversations. That's you participating in, it's like... It's, it's, it's deception. How's the deception? It's not real, but somehow you feel like you're drawn that you, you feel drawn that you need to have this type of, oh, Hey, how you doing? And Hey, and you feel drawn that you need to go and go to whatever function they're having. And you know that these people are not for you. You're being pulled in. You're being beguiled. Some things you got to realize that's, that's a greeting is as far as it goes. You are never going to be friends like that. You're never going to fellowship like that. Light and dark cannot, they cannot be. They are living their lives, doing whatever they want to do. There's some people are serving God however they want to serve God. They're compartmentalized. They're singing right along with you in the choir, but their heart is very shifty towards the Lord. They're speaking the words. They're saying amen to the same thing that you're saying amen to, but their heart is very shifty. God sees their heart. And I'm trying to tell you the most wicked individuals are those who can be compartmentalized. They can, they, they give God bits and pieces of themselves or maybe none of themselves. If they're not loyal to God and if they're shifty before the Lord, they're not going to be loyal to you. So you are not obligated to have those fake, strained, uncomfortable conversation. You are not obligated to have those pulling teeth conversations. You're not obligated to do those things. That is not what being a believer is about. You read the book, you read the word of God and you will see where it talks a lot about refraining, removing. You do not, blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You do not stand in the way of sinners. You do not sit in the seat of the scornful. You do not keep yourself in places where people are willfully evil and where God reveals a heart, even if they seem like they're fine, when God shows you who they are and when it's been revealed to you, they show you through their actions who they are. Stop trying to force it, guys. 
No, they didn't call you on your birthday. They're not interested. They don't greet you for the holidays. They're not interested in you. They did not invite you. They do not knock on your door. They do not check on you. They do not do certain things because they don't care. I don't care what they tell you. They're not interested. That's what it is. You're not invited to things because they don't want you around. And these are the things that you have to come to terms with. And don't think, oh, if I'm a Christian, I need to go over there and talk to women and make sure everything is fine. No, you continue to live. You continue to be the light. You continue to be the example. And being the example is being able to say, hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? And keep it moving. They ask you a question or whatever about something. You can answer that question. But getting into that, you know... That you know what I'm talking about. These conversations where you're talking like you guys are best of buds and everything is okay. Stop it right there. Do not allow yourself to be pulled into that type of fake conversation because it's a form of manipulation and it's not okay. It's not okay. Walk in the liberty wherein you have been set free. Do not be entangled again in the yokes of bondage. That's what those little fake conversations are like. Getting entangled again. What are y'all talking about? We have nothing in common. The Lord has warned you, follow the warning. If it says keep back, if it says beware, you don't go to the fence, do you? Hot, wet paint, you don't go touch the paint, do you? But unfortunately, there's got a lot of people who's got paint on them and their hands are swollen from touching the scorching surface and people got a dog bite, you know, because they went where it says beware of dogs. Beware of the lion, beware of the adders, beware of the serpents, beware of the, the shifty in heart, beware of the evil, the murderous, those who slander with their mouth, who gossip, whose heart and feet run for evil and they love to cast lots among themselves. These are the individuals. That's why there feels like there's this, there's a, a divide between you guys. Like there's just this wall between you. You could be talking to them and it's strange because your spirits are no longer in, you, your spirits don't match. There's a evil spirit there. This person's heart is not with you. That's the quote unquote vibe you get. Believe in God, believe what he tells you. As long as you know that you're seeking him and you're in his word and you're pouring out and you're ensuring that he's dealing with your heart and you're making sure that he's taking out all kinds of, you know, darkness away from you. Because I'm here to tell you, when you're holding on to unforgiveness, you can be seeing things all twisted too. But when you know that you're letting the Lord really deal with your heart and everything, believe what he shows you, refrain and just keep it simple and keep it moving. All right, guys.